friends, Eddie and Beth Taylor here, and it's our monthly video podcast. Hee <laughs> Who knows, we might do more in the future, but right now this is where we are. Yep. So, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I want to tell everybody where we are. We're literally in the parking lot of a um, Motel 6, IHOP, whatever, off the interstate because uh, we have deadlines, and so we pulled over to go ahead and film. Yeah, we've been down ministering in South Florida, and we're headed home. Yep. So, but we wanted to talk to you all about um, parenting. Yeah, it's really funny. It seems to be the topic on a lot of people's hearts right now. We're getting a lot of questions and yeah. comments. And so maybe later in another podcast or another video, we'll go into some more details. But we thought we'd share with you today something we learned many years ago that was very helpful to us. Yeah. And it's called the... The Four C's of Parenting. The Four C's of Parenting. And we honestly, we learned this. I, I can't remember at what point in our... We have three sons and our, in our boys' upbringing that we learned it. But our friend Greg Rogers, Pastor Greg Rogers from um, about the Birmingham area, taught us this. And it was... It was... It was so helpful for it us. was so very helpful so basically we'll get into it and then we'll share with you at every area what was helpful to us so greg taught us that basically in parenting there's four c's or four stages of parenting and the first c is is caregiving so you get that baby and for the next two years of your life you are basically just a caregiver you were doing every everything that they need you're doing they're not independent they they don't know how to do any of those things so you are pretty exclusively caregiving for that child and right about two or so is when they begin to develop their will and then all of a sudden you're shifting into you're still doing caregiving but you're shifting into more of the cop phase so the cop phase is cop 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 is you're helping them understand boundaries consequences choices worldview that there is a right and there is a wrong so basically you're stop that sit down do not wipe that on the wall do not do that that no nope, yeah. that's not okay and and so there's there's a lot of directing their behaviors through that that season yeah so you're still shepherding their heart that's always going to be part of it you're praying for them you're leading them and in the caregiver phase you know the, it, they're not very verbal to start with anyway and so you're you're basically you know singing to them talking to them loving mm -hmm. on them but when you move to the cop phase there's really one word that you use over and over again no, no. <laughs> and there should be yes because you want to redirect them and say here's what you can do so that you're not saying no all the time but let's just be honest we raised three boys we said no sometimes so yes yeah. no you may not jump off the top top bunk. no you may not slug your brother in the face it's not okay not okay so then when you move from caregiver to cop and then around maybe age 11 or so you move from being cop to the coach coach and this is a hard transition because you're used to telling your kids what to do and all of a sudden you need to give them some rope they need to be able to do things for themselves they need to be able to make their own mistakes so that you're on the sideline and not right up in their business all the time yeah no matter how great of a coach you are you could be like Kirby Smart or Nick Saban or Don Shula, some great coach, John Wooden from history, you don't get to play the game. You have to help them, redirect them, evaluate, help them go through their choices, yeah. go through their decisions, and you're coaching them from the sidelines. Now, this transition was very hard for me. It was, because yeah. he was used to telling the boys what they could and couldn't do. Yeah. And you are still directing their behaviors and providing consequences when they cross boundaries, but... Yeah. They need to be able to have the freedom to make some bad choices and to do some things that that aren't right and experience the consequences of their actions. It's life lessons, yeah. preparing them for the future as adults. Yeah, that really, I, I did have a hard time moving from from cop to coach. and But once I got it, it was a great transition and yeah. it caused a lot more peace and harmony. And it helped our guys with their development to help them make better oh, yeah. choices and again like beth said feel consequences yeah. it also taught them what grace was because they didn't always get consequences when they did something wrong sometimes we grace them and helping them understand the mm -hmm. weight and the power of grace is a beautiful thing it really is so then long about 18 that kid graduates from high school and your job is basically done as far as all of the in-depth up, up close coaching and then you move into the consultant phase yeah and so we all know that consultants do not come knock on your door and offer you advice unsolicited basically you 
you go to the consultant and say, hey, I'm having this issue, what would you advise? Now, there's, there's, you know, it's not like they turn 18 and all of a sudden you're not coaching them anymore. Right. But they're adults legally, and so you want to give them the freedom to, you know, they may move out of your house at that point, go off to college or go do something else. And so you're the consultant in their life. You've done your job as far as raising them in, in the fear of the Lord, and then you get to see what, what you've done. You get to see them become these incredible human beings that make their own choices and yeah rennie scott taught us something very important about the consultant phase rennie said unsolicited advice will always be received as criticism oh yeah man that was such a great thing when he taught us that because it helped us understand that in the consultant phase they come and ask you like yes. you said and then you're not always leaning in and what happens it's really through this time that I see so often the parent of a young of a tween or a or a teenager want to be friends with their kids and they abdicate their roles and responsibilities as parents but it's yeah. during this phase that really friendship can blossom and bloom now don't get me wrong there's seeds of friendship all along the journey you want to build a loving relationship yes. but it's during this consultant phase that it really blooms and it's really fun and you know, I have the opportunity to work with two of my sons and one of my daughters-in-law, and uh, and it's in seeing that that it's really beautiful that we get to watch our friendship and yeah. we're we're friends and co-laborers at work and they're co-laborers with us and so much of the ministry. It's just a beautiful thing. It is, and honestly, to be friends with our adult children is one of the greatest gifts that we have. And I would say this: that the most the most important thing you can do as a parent is to listen to your children. Listen to their hearts. I'm not an advocate for the gentle parenting that doesn't give parameters and doesn't give consequences for actions. I don't see that biblically, but I am an advocate for listening to their hearts and training them and teaching them how to process their emotions. And you know what else? When you listen to those guys, you'll learn some things. I learned things listening to my teenage children and now my adult children. I've learned a lot of things. They've opened my eyes to some things that I wouldn't have seen otherwise. And so younger generations have so much to offer. We have a lot to offer, sure, we do, but listening to our children is invaluable. Yeah, communication, remember, at the end of the day, is simply shared meaning. And so developing this relationship through all the stages of parenting yeah. in your children's life cycle and your life cycle, and then sharing meaning is just a beautiful thing. And so that's just what we want to talk about today. And hey, if you've got questions or comments, you can reach out to us both on the YouTube page and on social media. Mm -hmm. You can email us. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love yeah. to share what we're learning, what we've learned. And thank you so much for your support and your prayers. We literally couldn't do what we do without you, yeah. our partners, our prayer partners. So thank you so much. And uh, we believe this is that leadership matters. Yes. And so when you get better, when the leader gets better, mm -hmm. everybody wins. And so yeah. thank you for tuning in today. Thanks, guys.